Reggie Miller and C. Webb joining us here. The movie tonight, now it's released nationally on Friday. And uh, Uncle Drew with uh, Reggie C. Webb, Kyrie, Shaq, Nate Robinson, and Lisa Leslie. And uh, the world premiere tonight here in uh, New York City. We were just talking uh, before we came back on about uh, James Harden. And I joke about it. I would have music every Every arena he went into, I'd like, you know, walking on sunshine and traveling man. And, <laughs> These and, boots are made for walking. Yeah. Yes. Take a walk on the wild sun. Yes. Okay. You guys have talked about it. Now, what did the league do league-wide about uh, James Harden? And is there traveling with that signature move that he has, that step-back move? Yeah. Most of the time he steps back is traveling. Okay. Sometimes he step back isn't traveling. Okay. He does have the best Euro step, which I think confuses mm -hmm. everything because he and Ginobili are the best Euro steps that we've seen. Uh, but they sent out a tape saying that this is not traveling. It is not a travel. And uh, we were surprised, but I mean, I guess they claimed the ter territory early. We're not, we can't make him change it. He's a great player. Get used to this new move. So I the league was way. probably tired of hearing from everybody. Everyone and just was said probably complaining because it does, and in my opinion, I don't mind the step back, but it's the bunny hop after the step back. Yeah. To me, you, you're gaining an unfair advantage. Yeah. To me, that's traveling. Did you guys know how good he was in Oklahoma City? You know, Dan, I think that's when I started to really get my chops as a commentator because I didn't realize why the whole world was mad at me because I was, I guess I was being politically incorrect saying OKC is making the dumbest move ever. They should not do this. This guy leads. He was leading the league in assists in the fourth quarter, and he was coming off the bench being the sixth man. So I can't say I knew he was MVP status, but I knew he was somebody that you do not trade from these two players because with Westbrook and Durant, he was, uh, he was like the equalizer. He kept everybody involved. He wasn't trying to score too much. He would keep Westbrook involved, keep yeah. the ball out of Westbrook's hand at the time, and he would get, hook Durant up. So, yeah, I knew it was, uh, I thought it was one of the most terrible moves ever. And it was for Andrew Bynum. It was to get Perkins for Andrew Bynum. That's all I kept saying. Like, <laughs> you guys are making a move for Andrew Bynum as if he's Shaq and you got to worry about him. So, yeah, that, that was dumb. And they'll, they'll, I mean, they're going to continue to regret that whether Westbrook stays or not. That's going to haunt them. But, if you look back, if Oklahoma City had kept James Harden and, and let Westbrook go, would Durant still be in Oklahoma City? No, they didn't have to let Westbrook go. Well, just I think you did just for the, the you know, Westbrook dominates the ball. No, no, no. But they all love playing together. See, remember, what this is Harden did not want to take that leadership role, if we remember, whether it was Kevin McHale saying it or other players saying it. He was happy in that role of coming off the bench. That's why I was like, you have to keep it and, and oh. you see their relationship. So I don't think it was one or the other. Now, if you would have kept them, you know, personalities, maybe. I don't know if he would have grown, sure. though, to the, I mean, he was always a gifted scorer, right. but would he have become what he has no. now? No, he wouldn't. But, I don't think. But you're saying that the, so Durant liked playing with Westbrook. He liked playing with Harden. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. That, that if I keep Harden, then I keep Durant. But if you keep Harden, both of them would have been happy because you have a okay. guy that balances oh, them out boy. in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Has there ever been a franchise or a team that's had three MVPs? Think about this. I mean, Kevin Durant won MVP. Obviously, Westbrook last year was MVP. And then this year, Harden win it, wins it. This was a team that went to the finals. Obviously, they were younger versus uh, the Cavs and LeBron. But... Like, what if? What if they would have stayed together and they would have had a chance to kind of grow up together? Could that have been the dynasty that people were talking about? Well, if you had, let's say you had Golden State's three without Durant, but you had Durant, Westbrook, and Harden. That's your super I, team in Oklahoma City, I think City, I'm rolling, right? yeah, like I'm rolling it, with OKC. You like, you like OKC better than you would Golden State, right? OKC was up three. But they, yeah, three they had them. without Harden. They had them. But imagine if they beat them. Does Durant stay in Oklahoma City? Yes. I don't think he stays in Oklahoma City, but he's certainly not going to Golden State. I think he stays because he wins, <laughs> and if you win one there in that small market, I just don't see, you know, how you can go. Like, where is Ruda? 17 years in Indiana? 18, 18 years. 18 years in Indiana. I, I think they would have seen the other side to it that, hey, we did win one here. Mm -hmm. We can have our career separately in the summers, live other places. But I, I think he would have it stayed. It was a blessing in disguise to lose. If you're Golden State. For Golden State. Oh, yeah. It was a blessing in disguise because you got Kevin Durant. We were also talking about this prior to the show, and, and we go back to the Fab Five that maybe you guys built the first super yeah. team. Yeah. Because Juwan Howard 
was, I think, the first guy in at Michigan, and then he recruited you guys. So he's building a super team full of freshmen. And I don't know if we've ever had that before with with a super team. Yeah, I, that's, that's a great point because we were friends. But I almost went to Duke because Grant Hill, you know, it was a lot of at that time your friends being the ones saying, hey, man, we, we can do this. Forget about oh coaching. Oh, my God. Me. You almost went to Duke? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Duke, How Michigan. Close was Whoa. Duke, Michigan. I mean, if you ask Coach Ken Tom Izzo, I mean, some, some things happened. But I, I really almost went to Duke. Michigan was 30 minutes away from the front door to, to the dorm. And, uh, well, what happened? Juwan, you know, I'm, I'm the oldest of five. My parents, you know, staying home with family, you're the oldest, you want to, you know, be there. I love Michigan, you know, and so, uh, but it was, it was funny because Juwan, I, funny story, I met Juwan at Nike camp. <laughs> oh, God, it's a funny story. He had a big nuke shade in his head. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, I was the youngest kid in camp. You know, I'm nervous. And I remember being like, who is this old ass guy over here? <laughs> and I remember thinking, like, he has to be a senior. He looks the exact same. Go team, maybe a little gray. And um, I just remember him being cool. And, you know, he was the one saying, I think Illinois was uh, on probation that year. Or he was definitely, he's a, he's a Chicago guy. Yeah. And he was like, listen, man, Michigan sucks. Last year, they only won like 12 <laughs> games. They're terrible. We don't have a lot of... He's like, we don't have people. He's like, man, you know what? If we all go, we might be able to start. <laughs> and we were like, man, you been some yeah. playing time too, you know? So, no, he was, uh, he was a big, big reason to that. Along with, I grew up with Jalen. Uh, I knew him in Detroit the whole time. And, uh, and then I got, kind of got close with Ray as well last. So, yeah. Okay, so how close? Was it going to be Duke and then Michigan State? No, it was going to be Michigan State. First, okay. I, I I I thought I was going to Michigan State from growing up, my whole life being a Magic. Right uh, now, you Arizona are fan. killing people in Michigan right now. But no, I chose right Michigan. It's like saying that, Michigan State. It's like wow. saying I. Yeah, but, know, but I made the best Tom choice. Tom Izzo told us two years ago he's still bothered by le by that that well, he lost you. You know, wow. he I consider Tom a very close friend. And it's from uh, all those years of, of getting to know each other. You know, I saw him under Coach Heathcote. I saw the program he was building. I saw his intensity. And I got to know him on a level before he was a, a, a head coach that I'll always respect. So he and his wife, I love them. But uh, yeah, almost almost went there. You, you could have done Izzo. You could have done Coach K. Well, see, Grant Hill, too. So I've known Grant Hill since Whoa. I was like 11. And he and I were very close. Could you friends. have gotten along with Leitner? First of all, Duke was. And it's funny. I think I no. saw that. First of all, I saw no, this Duke Chris. documentary. I hate Duke was by far my best visit. You know where they took me? They took me like to the black college, like down the street, North Carolina, A <laughs> and T or something. See, we have black people here. Yeah. No, but I Come went on. there. But I went to this. I went to this HBCU, and I go with Christian Leitland like on a Monday. Like, uh, first of all, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> no conditioning. First of all, this is how you recruit people. No conditioning. They just played their way in. That's all the players say. Like, man, we don't have conditioning. We have good practices, no conditioning. You know, that's when we were running yeah, on the yeah. track and everything. And he's like, look, we have all these universities around. And they just, it was the best parties ever that, 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 uh, that Grant Hill and uh, I, I give Leitner more credit. He showed me a great time. With but that. you got along with Leitner. Yeah, I mean, if it was on the court, we didn't like it, you know, but... I, I'm really good at, you know, keeping it on the court or not, and you know, so... Separating? I, yeah, but he's, uh, I mean, in, in my opinion, Christian Leitner is, you know, in my generation, he's the best college player to ever lace yeah. him up. Yeah, yeah. Period. No, he came he's through in big three. games. Yeah, I mean, he, he, when he there was a big game, three. big moment, he came up big. Yeah, and he was consistent those four years, and he, and he really changed the game as far as where he was shooting threes and, and having the ball in the post and passing. The things that Coach K did for him to allow his game to flourish really helped big fellas like myself. And he had swag. And he, he had swag. Yeah, he didn't yeah. care. That's what yeah. I love about he him. Had he had swag. Didn't, <laughs> Chris Lake didn't care, He had man. swag. Okay, so Jim Harbaugh calls you and says he wants you to go. Tell me how this happens, that Jim Harbaugh is inviting Chris Weber back to Michigan. When's the last time you've been back to Michigan? Um, had a cousin's graduation, and uh, it was up there. It was a while ago. Uh, I talked to Coach Harbaugh a couple times every season. Were you uncomfortable at the graduation? Uh, I, I'm uncomfortable in large settings when we're celebrating family members because I don't want to... I don't want my presence to up, up okay. you know, show up with their But going. being on campus didn't make you uncomfortable? No. Okay. No, I, no. But you haven't, you hadn't been back basketball wise. No. Have you but, been invited back basketball? Yeah, but so so let's go back from the beginning. So mm -hmm. like ten years after the NBA, I never going back. You know, like after I called a timeout and everything, then I was on a mission to 
try to right every wrong. You know, you want to win a championship, you want to play. So it never was a thing, oh, I'm not going back. It was like, I got business to do. And when I come back holding this trophy, I got you. You know, that type of thing. And didn't get a trophy, thanks to uh, Shaq and a couple of his... Uh, <laughs> Uh, zebra stripe Bad referee Paul. friends in there. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Oh, he's breaking it down. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so that, that was, that was uh, a, a little bit uh, tough. So, no, I hadn't been back. And then, you know, just all the controversy and things. And, and really, Dan, with the controversy, it's like you need time to sit down and talk about it. I never wanted to do like a five minute interview, take the snippet from that and let that define it when there's so much to talk about. So, with that, I never really felt. I never really felt any type of way, truthfully. So the last few years, when Coach Harbaugh got the job, if you remember, Coach Harbaugh wanted the job at Michigan before, and he went to Stanford. And we had a little bit of a, a kindred spirit time then, because we both uh, have known Bo Schenbeck, we both have had intimate conversations with him, we both know Michigan men, he wanted to be there, took down all his jerseys and all this stuff, and they brought him back, called him to congratulate him. Every year I'm a big fan. Hey, Coach, how are we doing this year? So he's asking me, three years, maybe in a row, to come back. And I said, Coach, I don't think this is the right time. Coach, I don't think this is the right time. I love the university, I'll be back. I don't think this is the right time. So the other day, we were doing a charity, Michigan from the Heart, and it's a charity, Reg, that we did at Michigan where they take the athletes and you go to the children's hospitals mm -hmm. and you work with the kids. And it, mm -hmm. it really changed you know, my life at the time. We had this kid, Randy, and other kids that maybe weren't supposed to uh, be with us for a little while. And, we made them part of the team and just, right. you know, the inspiration right. they gave us. And so right. we were on this show talking about all the good times with Jamie Morris, ex-football player. And I, I was yeah. doing the, Jamie a favor and wanted to help for the charity. I hadn't spoken in a while. And um, Coach uh, Harbaugh knew I was on there. And uh, he called in uh, again and asked. And I give him a lot, a lot of credit for it because it could have gone bad on the radio, you know, or, you know. And uh, I thank him for asking me. And... Uh, I definitely want to show up, and I want to that have some fun. That is awesome. Yeah. Do you know what game yet? I don't, but uh, I think I do. But I'm, you know, you got to pick the you got to pick the best game. Yeah, oh, yeah. And it's uh, only a Ohio couple. State? Of, uh, we don't play Ohio State at Ohio State. Michigan State out of Michigan so State. Michigan so it's State. a couple. No, nah, it's Penn State. It's a couple games. It's, it's a Notre couple Dame. Games. No, we don't have any of those games. But some of those games I'm going to travel and go to. You know, I have a friend that played at Ohio State, so we go to games, sneak in the games all the time. And so uh, I think it may be the Penn State game, but I'm not sure. But I tell you this, Dan, I'm, uh, I pulled out my varsity jacket. My father, he has That's awesome. My father has everything. You know, he steals your trophies and stuff. Mm -hmm. He don't know where it's at in the dirty. <laughs> He's like, oh, you need that? I got it for you. So he you brought still that have up. your Michigan varsity jacket? Oh, I still got my Michigan varsity jacket. You know, let me tell you, I don't know why I'm doing this, but it's always like story time for Dan. But, uh, yeah. He brings it up. You know what I mean? But uh, a really good story is, I may have said this before. How about, but, we, okay. how about we take a break? Okay. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Show. yeah. Right. More with uh, Chris Weber and Reggie Miller. The movie is is Uncle Drew premiere tonight? Uh, we're not walking the red carpet, by the way, Reg. Just show up. Yeah, we will. Okay. I mean, that's all I did when I played. I just showed up. Y'all, you really think y'all man's gonna be a will call? <laughs> <laughs> they all are. <laughs> They're not gonna be there. Personally, you're like who? It doesn't matter. You're gonna be there. I'm gonna go. I'm sitting next to you. But I'm not doing red carpet. Because then it'll be yeah. awkward where we'll walk and then they'll want to no. talk to you and then I. I told you, you I had to stay. There Someone there. was gonna yeah. say something to you. Like, if maybe to you. I don't know about... See, Webb or all the Dan no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Fritzy. I just got a note from PR saying the will call actually means they will call us. They may have already run out of time. All right, uh, we'll be back. More with Chris Weber and Reggie Miller right after this. 15 after the hour, Dan Patrick Show. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.